how could I, how could I betray the recording on the last day of class? Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's looking, I can already tell that's, that's just looking, it's looking a lot smoother in general. Um, this, this base, like this base foot right here, um, one, it penetrates the ground over on this side. Oop, oop. Get your ground plane in there. Just, just create like a polygon uh, floor. Um, but yeah. Dun, dun. A little bit of jitteriness on this on this outer hand over here. Jittery hand. But yeah, this is this is definitely looking looking a lot more stable, a lot more solid. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, right here, sometimes I feel like I'm fighting the rig when it goes into FK. Is that natural or is it just me? No, that's definitely natural, right? Because like FK is determined like by your entire torso. So if if I want an overlap on this wrist, right, and like my torso is rotating like this, if I wanted to to over uh, put some overlap on this on on this uh, this wrist, you need to go to the shoulder, and as it's rotating forward, you need to rotate that back a little bit. So you, you're you're constantly counter animating when you're in FK. That's how you that's how you sell that weight. The 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 sweet deal about it though is that you get a lot of nice arcs because of it you get really clean arcs because of fk and how it works um because remember when it, when it, when you're in fk it's looking at every single joint in the skeleton before it to determine or it, it, to, to figure out where that end that end wrist is going you know uh but ik is is just solving that that end position just based on like where you drag it in space, you know? So that's, that's why IK gets really rigid kind of bad looking arcs that are really like it, not selling the illusion of, of life very well. Um, but like, like I said, they both have their, their, their strengths and I animated everything in, in IK when I was um, starting out as well. Like it's making it appear too floaty and lose weight. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, exactly. Because like to, to sell that weight, weight is all overlap pretty much, right? Because like I can't just like take a 10 pound weight and then hold it in one hand and immediately just stand up, right? Like it's gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna see it like stay in space a little bit. Or, so like, I can't, I can't, yeah, see how like it, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna overlap, it's gonna, even extend down a little bit, you know, it's like to get like some of that, some of that uh, anticipation in there. So like, yeah, like that's how you sell that weight. And that's, and that's how like, you should be thinking about everything that way, right? Cause like our bodies and arms have weight too. Our heads have weight, though our heads usually are the guiding action. Cause that's like what's, our brains are processing everything. So like, when you're looking around, your head usually leads, or at least your eyes do. Um, but yeah. This is making it appear too floaty and losing weight. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That is, uh, that's the classic. That's the classic. Yeah, yeah. I like this posing. <laughs> He's definitely just kicking him right in the dick, though, <laughs> with, like, his hamstring. <laughs> Brains have weight. Speak for yourself, Benny. This is, like, the second time you said that you don't have a brain. <laughs> I will not accept this. I will not accept this self-slander. <laughs> How do you know I don't have a brain? You've never seen it. I, I've, seen, I've seen the things that it creates, though, Benny. That's what if it's just, like... A microwave in there like a really good one a really good microwave i mean well it, brains are basically meat with electricity so uh so i mean you know 
what's 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 meat with electricity compared to a box with electricity you know so <laughs> well i mean mine's empty you're just full of electricity <laughs> it's just full of light what it, it's it, lame <laughs> it's lame nah, dude. <laughs> nah um but yeah this is looking great i i want to see that impact when when he when he freaking slams him on the ground and he has his limbs up and he's like oh man i'm so dead and that's why that's what i want to see next you know that's where it's going let's get that in there and really just just sell the overlap on those arms so just have them on that down pose when he hits the ground just have them extended up and then boom. And just splat on the ground. Boom. But yeah, looking great. Looking great. Looking fantastic. I love this little cat picture. It's a little box cat. It's so good. Is that from Katamari Damasi? Is that what that's from? I know I have a bunch of. Oh, a Katamari cat. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. The soundtrack for the first one, freaking slaps, dude. Definitely use that and crank away on stuff when I'm doing some crunch. All right, we got through, we got through everyone, everyone. Um, so, uh, oh, okay. Um, so, what to go into next? I uh, today I have to show. Um, I want to show. I want to show Grecia how to render out. Render out poly paint stuff in Arnold. Um, let's see, I already showed some stuff for the texturing process. Man, these characters are looking so sick, dude. They're looking so sick. Dude, any of y'all thinking about being modelers in the future? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, talking dude. To, talking to Sophia, the same aforementioned girl from, from before that. Like, <laughs> we're like, well... <laughs> we're like, well, you know, we both want to do, like, animation and comics and stuff. But, like, it's hard to do that 2D right now because of capitalism. So, yeah. like, well, you know what? Let's just let's just be modelers because we're pretty good at that. And mm -hmm. that pays. Or we could even be sound designers because it also pays. And we also kind of know how to do that. And so we're like, well, we yeah. can just make good money doing that and do our own thing on the side and still be doing art professionally and as a, as a personal thing. We're like, you know what? That's, that actually sounds like a viable career choice. So. Right? It's just, it. it's also just, yeah, I don't know. I just have a lot of fun with it too. Like It is, yeah. Like, um, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely, like if you guys ever want to send me stuff, like, if you're like, oh, heck, yeah. I'm keeping you as a reference as long as you'll have us as the people who look to you as a god. <laughs> <laughs> Please Practicing don't. That's uh, it's weird. <laughs> I do not. I do not. Uh, do not condone any sort of uh, idolizing. Yeah. Um, I'll just take... like you're, yeah. Of course. Of course. As long as you'll have us. Let, as long as you let us bug you. Yeah. Bug you. I'm always down. I'm always down to be bugged. It'd be so sick if we just had like a 3D club on campus or something. Honestly. Be so cool. Yes. I know I mean, Fullerton has lunch. one. At they... this point, everybody I think feel, owes you lunch at this point. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna steal lunch money, y'all. Can we get like cool retro 3D glasses to show that we're in the club? <gasps> yes. Oh, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. You gotta sculpt them out yourself, though. And 3D printer. Get a 3D, a 3D printer. printer. Yeah, that'd be badass. Dude. <laughs> you must earn your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then everyone's gonna be different because they all made their own. That'd be so sick. <laughs> uh, considering buying a ZBrush license for sure. Yeah, David. Yeah, like, because if you're gonna be doing modeling. Better, gonna, better brush up on those ZBrush skills. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, I do the subscription. So it's like 150 for six months. So it's, it's not my favorite. I hate the subscriptions, but it is updating with cool features. Like the, the one that got released has like, um, has like cloth simulation stuff. So instead of having to go in and like sculpt a bunch of fabric 
like creases and stuff you can just make a, a, a piece of cloth and then like just have it like kind of drape over the model or like cling to it and then you have a bunch of brushes for that as well so it's like a new feature that um the the student license doesn't have uh, access to or the, the trial license doesn't have access to um i saw that when i was thinking about making a cape and it was so sad to see it was in the, oh yeah 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 it sucks i mean you could potentially do that in maya as well with n cloth uh and like pinning it to the the character but um it's just nice to do all your high poly stuff in in the brush, you know just for being in mean, one congealed place i'll legit take up anything that'll give me a job but i do enjoy the modeling hell yeah i mean you've got a knack for it as well so uh, it'd be it'd be sick to see you you push further on it you know um i'm always down for you guys to keep pursuing 3d stuff uh, i can just do modeling forever fuck yeah aggressive yeah like i mean all of you guys have shown proficiency in this stuff like and I'm, I'm glad you're able to take to the 3d software like this um but yeah if you, if you keep pushing on it y'all it'd be sick that would be sick um let's see what else there we go yeah so yeah today the only thing that i that i was gonna have to show was was gracia rendering out poly paint uh, and then fixing probably fixing some bake stuff with Benny um, if if Benny runs into those problems. Um, I, I love running into problems. It's like my most favorite thing to do. Oh, you came to the right class then because that's what Fuck 3D yeah. is. Fuck yeah. <laughs> bake stuff. Uh, is anyone else trying to bake out stuff and needs assistance on that? Anyone else at all? Yeah, I'm baking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tam, let me know if you you run into any issues also, because like you could you could send me over your high poly or and the low poly, um, and then I could try to get something baking out on my end, and then you could just copy my settings basically. Um, and yeah, I think Yi was we, Yi was also baking and having some issues. So yeah, Yi, send me. Feel free to send me over your your high poly and low poly. And then I could try to repl one replicate your bake that you have going on and see if I can get similar results and then see if we can do anything to fix them. So yeah. So Benny, Yi, Tan, uh, I think Diana as well. Diana as well, yeah. I'm working on the ponytail retopo. I regret my life choices. Oh no. You could, if it's, is it one piece, Diana? Is it just one, one piece? Or is it a bunch of different uh, sub tools and poly groups? It's just one piece. Um, because if it's one piece, you could you could try to do that Z remesh half, like just turn off adapt in the Z remesh settings, uh, duplicate that sub tool so you have the high poly still, and then just Z remesh half um, if if you still uh, have that as a, as an option in there. But yeah, that ponytail, as soon as I saw that ponytail, I was like, dude, this looks sick, but this is going to be, this is going to be a pain. <laughs> this is going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, because it, just, it has so much form to it, you know. Um, any animators have anything that... Uh, they're struggling with that they, they, they need help with because I'm down to look at animation files as well and, and mess with those. See if something's really going, going, going on strangely in there. <sighs> Gotta keep the crunching, hell yeah, hell yeah. Okay, so I'm going to look for some uh,
I think my problem is that two mesh aren't match in some place. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely be the case. Yeah. Um, they definitely could be the case. All right, so let me, I'm gonna go, have to go into ZBrush and polypaint some stuff real quick. Uh, sure, I'll just do anime head. And I'm just going to fill with a color. Color. Fill object. Cool, cool. Uh, and I'm just going to paint on some fake ass eyebrows. It's going to be pretty cool. RGB, turn off C, add. Very nice, very nice. Uh, that way we'll be able to test if this is actually getting applied. So now I'm going to basically export. Um, I'm recording, yeah. So Gressia, basically, you're gonna have all your poly paint stuff and you'll just export a, um, try doing a dot .ma for this. Uh, that, that way it's just keeping all that data in there and uh, let's bring this to a let's bring this to a folder for the class desktop course materials 427 scenes head poly paint there we go save um, so just exported that head. Let's go hop over into Maya. That's the wrong Maya. Let's close this and never look at it again. Uh, let's go to this Maya. Let's go to a new scene. Don't save. And then we're going to file import. Go ahead, I'm going to find that same folder, that 427. Scenes. Head poly paint test import. And now it's thinking. There we go. So I need to open up Arnold. I'm just going to do a physical sky real quick. And then I'm going to open up Arnold render view. I would recommend getting some nicer lighting in there, kind of refine it more. Let's just see what we're looking at when I press the render button thus far. Yep, 
There we go. Okay, so nothing, nothing. So now what we need to do is kind of forward a few channels to some things. And let's click around. So assign a new material. Uh, with that object select, assign a new material. And Arnold, uh, AI standard surface. Then we're going to go to Windows, Rendering Editor, Hyper Shade. I'm going to go to that AI standard surface one that I just made. AI standard surface one. Let's click all these channels. There we go. And there's a node. Let me look up what it's called. There we go. So you you press tab in in this in this little empty space. AI uh, data color. User data color. User data color. Then you're basically going to take the out color from this. You're going to take that little little red spot right there and then drag that into your base color. Um, and then in here, on, on, on that node, that data color node, so I just select that node and then type in, let's see, color set through this color. At zero. And so that should be set there. And then let's go back to our render now. Because this is this is all that standard surface shader for the head. So this should get real shiny now. Nice. So now let's go back into the material and click that standard surface. And you're just going to drag down the weight on the specular stuff. And then um, drag up the color. And let's see. So we need a node called Gamma Correct. Cool, cool. Then you need to enter zero point four five four. all of these for color space reasons, I guess. Um, yeah, then you just drag this out color into that input. And drag this out value into that base color. And then Then you're going to select the face itself and go to the attribute editor. And I think export vertex colors, is that, is that what it requires? And I need something else. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Let's close this down. Review. So, yeah, sorry, this isn't gonna be this is gonna be fascinating to look this up again. Whoops, yeah. So you have to untick export reference positions. Dash controls. Ah, oh, hmm. Hmm. Maybe that back one can go set. Weird. Try exporting this as an FBX to see if it comes in. Here we go. Bad maps. So I'm exporting that. Uh, exported. Let's try doing this again. File import. The dot ma might not have worked. Let's see. What does he even export? Exported. Okay. Cool. Cool. Import. So I'm going to go to that head. I'm going to to the attributes. There we go. All right. So currently, current color sets, color, color set zero. So yeah, don't export a dot ma because it's not going to come in with the the color set of that poly paint. Um, and then turn on export vertex colors. Turn off export reference positions. Um, and then let's look at uh, let's assign that existing material that AI standard surface that we made. Uh, you could also rename that shader as well to like face mat. So it's face material. Uh, and then let's make sure, let's see, AI user data color, color set zero. It's going through the gamut correct. Very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. Uh, and let's see, let's see if it renders out. I might, I, might, I might have forgotten some sort of setting in there. And there we go. There we go. It is rendering. Very nice. 
So that's how you can render out some, some poly paint stuff on there. Um, of course, it's not going to be as advanced as like, uh, uh, it's not going to be as advanced as like actually doing textures in Substance Painter, but um, I mean, you, you can get some nice shippable results though for the class. So, so yeah, there you go. Um, there's quite, uh, let me send you some uh, screen grabs as well. So let me go to the, the this will be the setting, because you need to do settings on the, um, oh, someone's unmuted right now, you can, you can hear them, so be careful y'all. Um, let's see, can I expand this? Even more. There we go. Okay. So these are the settings on the attribute editor. And make sure that you have something in the current color set in there. Um, and then make sure you have these two settings as well. Export vertex colors clicked on, export reference positions off. So that's the, that's the settings just in the attribute editor. Um, we'll put that in resources, polypaint, render settings. Attribute editor. And then in your hyper shade, let's just take a picture of all this. Um, it's pretty much okay. All right, here you go. Let's do another one. So hypershade is in um, Windows. Rendering editors or render editors. Um, and then Click on Material Applied, like so. Whenever you bring it into the scene uh, and you apply that AI standard surface, uh, then you go click on this button. And that'll bring up the graph of everything. Uh, tab to create node. And you can just type in uh, AI user data color and gamma correct. Um, and then make sure on that AI, they click on the AI data color node and then go to attribute, type in color set zero. You should be, you should find that on your settings on that mesh. And then in gamma correct, make sure it's, uh, click on that node and then do 0.454 on all of those channels. They start out as one on all channels. And then plug that into your base color, and then you should be good to go as long as that material's on your um, on your character. Uh, let's see, hyper shade settings or uh, for, for the 
a standard surface you make. Standard surface shader, I should say. Boom, there we go. All right, and then you should be, you should be set there. Um, okay. Single problem soon. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about just mask the wrong area of the map in substance. Is that possible? It will probably take a lot of time to fix the mesh. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can show you a way to do that. Basically, you're going to be painting out the the imperfections on it. Uh, ye. Does that does that sound like what you're trying to do? Does that, does that sound appealing to you? Um, I showed it in the last lecture that we did. Um, I showed a paint over that that sort of messed up detail. Um, but we can go back to that five that folder in there. Yes, I will check it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll show I'll just show how to do it here real quick as well. Um, so it's our normal map. Uh, say there was like a problem on the base of this, like in in here somewhere, something going wrong with that. Um, we can do a few things to fix that. Let's see base. I see that I'm already doing it in this in this file as well. Um, but let's actually let's, let's just start it over. So basically, you bake out your your uh, your mesh maps. You can see them right here. You have all your uh, let's see normal right there, and uh, all your ambient occlusion and stuff. Uh, and then something went wrong. So you need to do you need to like kind of basically paint over certain parts of this. Uh, what you need to do is first uncheck this normal map. So just like press the X on that. Uh, if you want it back, you can always just select normal map and then click it in your little uh, mesh maps file. Uh, but what we're, what we're gonna do is go to the very bottom of our layer stacks, so like at the very bottom of this. Uh, we're gonna do create a fill layer. It's gonna move it up one. So let's just drag that down. And on that material, you're just going to uncheck everything except for normal. Normal is the only one we're concerned with. And then you click the normal uniform color node in here. Just click that. And then uh, you can just start typing normal map in here. And then you'll see the one that baked out. So you can just click that. And then you have it back in there now, right? So that's, that's on there. Um, and I have, and then you go to, to normal. Uh, so, you, so you change your, your, your base settings. So you go to normal and let's see, it, it looks like I'm, I'm doing some corrective stuff already. There we go. So it looks like it's overriding a lot of stuff. Ah, yes, okay. So there we go. So, uh, sorry, that, that was just like layered in there on accident. And uh, so, so now if I wanna paint out some of this, like say I wanna paint out this crease, um, I basically can create a layer above this. So I can, so I basically go to fulfill layer or, or I could do a paint layer, I suppose, as well. Boom, paint layer. And then on this paint layer, like in my brush settings, sorry, let me shrink this up a little bit. I can turn off everything except for normal because that's the only thing I want to be painting right now. Um, and if I go to so if I go to this drop down and make it normal and then do uh, instead of instead of NMDT, if that stands for normal detail on this, you just make that normal blend mode right there. And then you make this normal rather than normal DT. 
uh, you should be able to just paint over this. Boom, that just paints it right out. And you should be able to also click this little drag down, go to normal, and you should be able to color pick some stuff on here. Yeah, so you can color pick certain spots and kind of get some nice blending in there. There we go. Get some nice blending going on. Uh, you can even smudge your, your stuff around in here. And then, yeah, then that, that entire crease is just out of there now. Uh, and you, you could fix your other sort of stuff in there as well, um, just by working out the paint on it. But yeah, so that's basically how you do it. Again, just to recap, you go into your mesh maps, you X out that normal map, and then you bring that normal, that same exact normal map that you took off this list, you basically put it as a fill layer underneath everything. You change the norm, the 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 blend of it of the normals, of your norm uh, of your normal channels. And here you go to your layers normal. Make sure these bottom two are on normal because this is this is your base normals map, like the baked data, and then this is your fixed normals baked data, uh, or your fixed normals paint layer, the one that you're painting on. And then you just kind of paint over those. Nice, nice. Can I do the same with AO map? Right? Yep, exactly. Uh, except for AO, ambient occlusion, um, it, it, it basically goes on top of everything. So base color. Um, there you go. And you can see that I had it on a, a layer in here. Let's delete this. Um, so select ambient occlusion map. Okay, there we go. You can see that I have a problem on it over here. So if I wanted to bake that out, or if I wanted to paint that out, sorry, not bake, um, I would, once again, click the X on this ambient occlusion, and then make a fill layer on top of everything. And on this one, it is going to be a, um, it's, we're only dealing with the color, because that's the only thing that um, and the occlusion affects the color and then click on this, uh, click on the base color right there. Same as before, we're going to forward our ambient occlusion map, boom, right there. You can see the error in it right there. Um, and what we need to do, since this is just kind of, right now it's overriding the color of everything. Instead, what we want to do is go into base color, make sure you're on that, and do multiply. Boom. That way it's multiplying all the colors on underneath. That's how the ambient occlusion layer works in there. Um, and then do we can add, let's see, let's add a paint on this. And Okay, oops, sorry about that. Oh man, control G, I'm gonna group this so it's in a folder underneath everything. And then this, I'm gonna change this to multiply. There we go. And then change this to normal in there. So now I have a folder with with just my, my ambient occlusion map in there. And I can go in with a paint layer and have this be above that in the list. So I'm just gonna paint on top of that. And um, let's 
go back to our, our, our brush right here. And then we're just gonna be use, using a grayscale in here. We should be able to paint over this stuff. So just painting out that, that ambient occlusion in there. And then since, since they're in a, I'll rename this for clarity, ambient occlusion bake. So that's the baked map from, from the mesh maps. And then this is the AO paint over. And then those are both normal blending. They're in that top setting on there. Uh, and then there, you just press control G to have them grouped on top of each other and then set that to multiply on everything. Then you should be able to paint out the detail that way or paint out all the errors. That's cool, hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm glad you think so. No problem. No problem. Okay, so Gracia poly paint stuff is handled. And then the question bake stuff is Benny is on the way probably once Benny starts doing some baking. Uh, but yeah. So I'm just gonna hang around until six and then over then we'll go on a little bit of break and then we'll come back. So let's see what it is. That's right, there's a good plane flying by. Oh, I didn't mute. Sorry, yes. Uh, I was trying to mute that plane flying by, unfortunately. Um, uh, yeah, my, our cat's looking crazy in the air right now. Uh, Mike, when I was using polygon fill and some, some parts came out jagged, is that because edges are too close together in UV? Um, no, that could be due to a little setting. Uh, shoot, where is that setting? I believe it's in the texture set of settings. Um, yeah, David, hop over to, let me share my screen here. Uh, yeah, Che, we'll check out your stuff in just a second. Uh, but yeah, hop over to your texture set settings. Make sure your UV padding is set to UV space neighbor. So make, make sure it's over there. Um, and see if that helps. If it doesn't, then it might be like your, hmm, because it's doing it on like a per face basis, right? So like, if I zoom in enough, you can see the jagged edges of my like normal map by itself, you know? So like that could just be a resolution problem as well. Did uh, changing the UV padding help you, David, or no? I think it was just the resolution then, because when I zoomed in, it's the same jacket as yours. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's that's just a limitation of uh, the texture map size, you know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Uh, so let's let's check out what Che's got going on. We did the. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm not locking the cat in here on accident. There we go. All right, let's check out what Che has for us. Let's see. Boom. Bang. Still fighting. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot more polish, yeah, cool, cool. 
Good stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. This is a huge improvement, actually. You, you did a lot of stuff this week. Did a lot of stuff. Um, this right here is, is the reason that um, working with props is hard is because you want to keep that hand in uh, in just its position, right? Because if, if you move this hand, then it's probably going to move the sword as well. Um, for this sort of case, I usually just would animate the sword without like a parent constraint on this. Like I would, if there is another sword in the scene, I would duplicate it and then move it to this position or snap it to this position or snap it to a locator um, with red nine. Uh, and then basically as this goes forward, like if I get out my trusty sword and Here, oh shit. Huh. Um, where hmm. I'll just use this. Sorry, guys. One second. So you have like th this this sword, right? This is a tennis racket, but for all intents and purposes, this is a sword. Um, it, as he's going to the ground, let's get into the same orientation as him. As he's going to the ground, he's going forward, but that this thing is staying rigid in space. Basically, what's going to have to happen with this wrist is you're going to have to rotate it a little bit forward. So like. As as they're they're losing grip, that 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 wrist is like rotating around on that. So that's the only that's gonna be the only way that you can like clean up this this sort of bending of the wrist is that you have to have the arm be in a pose, kind of going around here, and then I believe he has like a glove on, and that wrist will end up kind of curled around the front of it. And this is where his thumb will be gripping around it there. So it'll have to be in this sort of pose. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's gonna be annoying. That's, that's like one of the most annoying parts of uh, animating a, uh, oops, that's weird. Uh, switch from that one for some reason. Uh, that's one of the most annoying parts of animating a uh, uh, a character holding a prop like this, especially when they're like resting on it. But yeah, uh, definitely get familiar with Red Nine for stuff like this. Like, look at how her sword kind of comes out of her hand. Um, but yeah, but yeah, you, this is a vast improvement. Yeah. Well, I think the nice part here is still weird. Doesn't yeah. She like some ninja or something. Yeah. Yeah, she gets. Yeah, I think it's the. Yeah, because she's pretty low. This silhouette, it's a little bit, gets a little bit strange as well. Uh, I do like how dynamic you're getting with the pose. Um, but you could, you could dial it back a little bit. Um, you are, you're definitely selling the fact that she's getting under it, but you could, you could kind of uh, dial it back in a little bit. Um, but I like, I like, I like where this is going. You can make this arm straighter so she doesn't have to go down as far. Um, it kind of gets, gets into the pose in there like that. Um, but yeah, let's see. Yeah, 
yeah, it'll just be a matter of, of making sure everything works. You don't have to bring her like this low. You can also bring the pelvis back a little bit to prevent the clipping of that knee in there. See how the, the right knee kind of clips the ground right here. You could just bring that, that waist back and up. Um, And then you might need a, a slight more, like a slight, a slight, slightly more time on on like the the get up, because like she takes like one step, or she like gets into one step and then kind of like flies. You need to. You're basically kind of running into a, a Sammy's uh, ballerina jumping off that that edge issue where where you, you need you need a pose in here that's kind of like um, that, that, that get, kind of gets that squeeze down of like the of the ankle to kind of show or uh, of the knee like we need to see the spring getting ready in that knee in order for us to to accept that she's going for a big jump right here well Also, the the uh, the way that this sword kind of kind of I, I like this pretty decently, but the the way that it kind of twists back, it's like impossible, right? Because right now she has she's going from this like front on to back. And then it goes around and her arm, like just, just try to do what she's doing in real life. And it's impossible. Like there's no way to like, so I'm like, whoa, back for that under dodge. And then like, I just can't twist it. So, so you, you, yeah, at some point you go back and then you'll have to go above like that. Like you'll have to go back and then above. You could, because like right now, you have to get this sort of action in there. See how like my wrist is flipping? Uh, that's gonna allow my my elbow to get underneath or in front of everything. But if you go, if you keep that straight arm, you have to do something like that in the air. Whereas it is, it's going like underneath. So so during some part during here. I mean, I also, if you don't like how ninja -y this pose is, you could just change it for something like something a bit more warrior y, like maybe like keep her both her hands on the sword. Let's see what her starting pose is. It is in that, it is in that, uh, that's, I think it's both on this side. So you could, you, you could just do like, like, let's see, what would be natural in there? Because like, I have to, have to go from that to leave the sheet. Gripping it right hand forward. How does she end up? Her right hand on top. So that's what we're ending up in. Yeah, I, I, I would say. I, I, yeah, I don't know. If, if you wanted to be less ninja, I would say like maybe try to keep both hands on that on that sword as she goes under underneath those daggers, because it that just by having both hands on the on the prop, it just feels like really strong, you know. So if you get that, it'll it'll kind of push the more warrior vibey vi vibiness of her. Like she just go under in a pose like that, and then do the do the hop out i think you might run into some issues with that hop out though just because like it's going a bit fast but i think if you get a scrunch pose like i was putting in right here if you get a nice little scrunch up in there i think that'll i think that'll it will, it will, it'll sell it but yeah something fun yeah that's all good um, no complaints Oh. 
I wouldn't break. Uh, I, I would. I would during this pose. I would keep her eyes still pointing a little bit this way. Um, because she got knocked. She got hit so hard, basically that like she's facing back a little bit. You know. Um, also, I, I can I can see that there's an, the I the IK control on this wrist. It's just, it's just looking too IK -y as it goes back down here. Um, also, because like when it swings, boom. The spacing on this on the sword should be pretty far away already, right? Because it, it just got deflected right there, so it should be out here. And then going along a smooth arc, it can definitely it needs to end up here for sure, right? Because that's like where the forces would go. But it would be like a boom. instead of it's going like and then down, and it's just it just, it just like fly off that off that other sword, you know. So so make sure make sure it pops back fast. Like I would say, already be back down by like this frame it'd be back down here um and yeah yeah just make it on a a clean arc as well because right now i can see that like though the way that it pulls in there and it goes back is it's very ik feeling uh, I do like this fist coming towards the screen in here. It uh, it reads a lot, a lot more clearly. I would I, like on the frame that they're they're getting contacted. I would get that fist even closer. Like it could be clipping on top of this jacket, just for like one frame, just to get that 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 contact in there. Um, I do wish, Basically, swings and then so basically swings. I, I basically I think to sell that punch, you need to do a swing, bring that bring that sword to the ground to to sell the weight of it because it ends up on the ground anyways. So you can bring it back there. And then you need to see, we, we need to see the, the torso kind of rotate with that, that fist as he draws it back. So to give it a so, rather than right now, he kind of brings it in close as he has that sword up. Like if he had the sword up right here anyways, he would just do another slash, you know? So I feel like we need to do like a like something like that instead of uh instead of what we got so so basically just bring this sword arm over to the ground uh like complete the swing of it boom so it would already be down here at this point or maybe not at this point maybe, maybe a few frames after like don't don't ever take my timing for like the uh, just fact straight up because I, I can't I can't actually adjust the uh, the frames in front of my my own eyes right now so I'm just usually guessing on this stuff but yeah I would say try to get that arm over there like behind the character and then on that like so on this wind up oh, 
we don't have much time in there. Yeah, there's not much time. You might. Yeah, I can see why you kept them in, in the center now, because there's not much time here for like a for an, an antic or an anticipation. Because we, we basically lose we lose the fist behind her in here. So that like, um, uh, the, you, you lose the fist behind the character. So it's, you would either need, like to, to resolve this, you need the, uh, the line to be more screen left to really clear out the space See, there's no negative space for that fist to, to rest in right there. It's just kind of getting crowded up. And then it really gets crowded up on the anticipation, which is what we don't want to do. Uh, we don't want to see, but we don't want to lose it like this. Like there's no way to identify that really. So you need, you need them to be further over here or something. I think be how you'd, you'd solve that, kind of keep them over here. I still, I still think we should have this sword kind of on contacting the ground back there, but yeah, you need to break that, that silhouette up so we can see that she's about to get clocked. Oh, I do like the fly back. So on a frame like this, boom, right after, when this fist is flying up, I want to see her kind of moving at that same, like on that same sort of tangent. I want to see this, the arc that her head takes. I want it to go here and then up a little bit, getting almost lifted up with that. You can keep the same orientation, same orientation, but you get that going in there and then you get this shoulder kind of an arm kind of lingering down. And then at this point, face barely in there, arm, torso. And you, you could you could leave the frame at some point in there too. Oh. Yeah, this is looking, yeah, this is looking a lot. It just just the, a few things to clean up, pretty much. Just a few things to clean up, and then then doing a little bit of a polish on all of it. Get every, everything looking, have, having some nice nice contacts on the on the props, and making sure that the props are taking all the a bunch of nice arcs, like right here. You get a little bit of gimbling out. Try to run an Euler filter. For this i don't know if it'll work um you might just have to key all those frames filter uh it'd be a graph editor uh curves menu in the graph editor An Euler filter. Oh, I got it. Nice. Um, then yeah, just just polishing everything else up. But yeah, honestly, so much so much progress on this. Yeah, they look they look so very alive in this. I like the, the little settle in there. Yeah. You, you could change this pose up if you want to be less ninja -y. Yeah, and then just try, try to get lying a little bit more screen left to make room for that fist on the, the anticipation. You would almost need the fist to take a boom. So it like its arc would have to be like here, here, 
here, here. So it's going to go like in the screen, it's going to go on an arc. It's kind of like this. So yeah, you're just going to have to clear out that, that line to give you enough space. Boom, have her kind of do like a, ooh, like, a, like she's getting, her head is like getting lift up, lifted up with that, that punch. Um, this settle could just use a little bit more overlap in here. Uh, like you, you could keep you could keep her a little bit higher up, a little bit more straight legged on this front one, um, and then when when her feet finally like grip like they do here, then then you could get like a a little bit of a a bent leg on that back supporting one, and then bent on these front ones as well, um, and then kind of like a just just an overlap on on all all this all the pieces of her to kind of give it that that weight but yeah yeah well, it's looking fantastic i can't, can't wait for to see the whole the whole thing rendered out well still has a long way to go yeah yeah that's uh for sure for sure but uh but yeah you you got this though i know you do I know you got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. feel free to send me stuff throughout the week if you're running into issues, if you want oh, any, sure. any eyes on anything. But yeah. All righty. Thanks for Thanks sharing. Tonight. No problem. No problem. All righty. Any, any questions from, from the rest of the crew? Uh, yes, kinda. Yeah. I'm I'm just finished the models and I separated the meshes, mm -hmm. the regular we apologize mesh, um, and the ZBrush mesh. Just have them in the same scene. If I just like pretty much move them out of the way from each other, it wouldn't like harm anything, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I usually keep them moved away from each other, but um, whenever you zero out that group that they're on, like you just go to your channel blocks, you just zero them out, and then that's that's what you do when, before you export them. Okay. 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 So okay. let me let me pop open that other scene. Uh -huh. Yeah, so low poly, and then uh, it's just at the very center of the scene, you know, everything's in the very center. Uh, and then the high poly, it like looks like it's displaced, right? But when I go to the channel box, and then once that opens up properly, there you go. You can see that everything's zeroed out except for that translate Z. So if I just press zero, boom, they're all snapped right on top of each other. Got it. And I let me go to object mode to see that then. Yes, yeah. And so then, everything everything should be zero, including y. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um you, for for your yeah, so basically some of them some of them don't need to be zeroed out. Like look at this, like belt high. It has like 160 on it, just because of like how it got imported into the scene, you know. So mm -hmm. Some of them could have, but as, as long as they line up in space here, you know. Right. As, if the Z was zeroed out, as long as it lines up, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let me see what my Ys are then. Okay. The Ys are the same then. As long as the... Okay. Yeah. As long as, long as they visually line up in the viewport here, they should, uh, they should be able to bake nicely. Gotcha. So you, you would want to keep your retopologized mesh at zero the whole time and then just keep the ZBrush mesh behind it? No, not like you can keep it to the left if you want. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing this for, for oh, okay. clarity's sake. Like you Got could just it. work with them on top of each other and then have That's a pain, uh, though. like a display layer. Like you could just select this uh, high poly and then make a display layer and then just visit off and on. 
mm. and then do the same for the low poly and does that off and on got it okay i gotcha so yeah there's there's definitely options you know okay okay um yeah as long as like when you export them that they're on that they're occupying like, the same space right sounds good okay cool all righty so you just cut uv's out and then that's the next step for this right yep yep cut uv since it's the since it's the uh kind of just bust it'd probably be just one along the neck excluding the shoulders um and then one along the back of that that neck up to the top of like the head up there uh and then just unfolded that way pretty much yeah super easy stuff yeah pretty 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 straightforward uh mike yeah so could you i put like an updated um slightly less crunchy version and it's in the same link as before oh yeah, yeah. um can you let me know what else i gotta do <clears throat> see it decrunched it might not be all the way decrunched but i think it's less crunch yeah less crunch for sure um also, something that I'm not that I didn't notice before uh, that you're tangenting a little bit on frame forty. It'd be, it'd be it'd be great if we could if we could break the these arms a little bit apart in here. Okay. Just a little bit. Uh, just throughout that the arc of that jump. Let's see what else. Boom! Nice, nice, nice. I still think you could delete. I like some frames on the spine in, in here. Ah, no, that's looking pretty good. Let's, let's see it. Um, let's see. Boom. Yeah, yeah, that's, like, that's looking better on this, on this arm, for sure. Um, I would ease into it a little bit more, this, this pose right here, because it just kind of goes boom and then flattens out. Maybe just do like a slight bit of overshoot afterwards okay. and then and then get back into the the pose that it's in on like this frame. Just do a little bit of like a like just, just very subtle. Like when that when that arm goes, just, just kind of give it give it a slight overshoot, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see, boom, bang, pow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, careful with these hands on this part. Like anytime that you you try to bend the wrist this way, it doesn't bend much. So it visually looks like really broken when you do stuff like that. So so try to keep this hand straighter out during that um because you can see it's like at the rotation that it's here it's like just getting pulled along so yeah, yeah make, just make sure Oop. straighten that out does this hockey work oh it does very nice um
Yeah, something about the something about the way that the arms move here is a little bit FK ish. You know, mm -hmm. just kind of they they kind of are like very rigid in like the the elbows and wrists area. So I would try I would try to give those a little bit more. Um, I'm about to do some like counter animation. Yeah. So like as this as this goes down, oops. Well, as those go down, you kind of just let them drag a little bit, give them a nice graceful sort of overlap in there. Um, just as they're doing that sort of movement in there, just break up that that sort of rigid nature of them. Um, this front arm kind of like, if you could keep it, because it, it, the way it, it kind of just pops up and it, it kind of surprises right there. Um, it's not a very fast movement. So something something between this and this, like these two don't read very well. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe try maybe you could try keeping the 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 same shape that you have on the frame before it. Like right here, you have some of that. Like if you could keep if you could keep the arm up in that curved shape it might read clearly when it goes up it might it, that, that might not work um we I, I would need to see it in 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 the in the viewport moving around uh, just to or or maybe start it a little bit early when it's going up also some weird stuff going on with the head i think the head might not be rotated enough like I think it might need to be facing this direction. Okay. Because it seems to fix once, like once they're facing a little bit forward. But eh, it's kind, of, it's kind of a lower. Because the character should be able to move their their head down. Which, you know, you don't want you don't want like Batman from the '90s Tim Burton movie where he like can't can't like move his head at all. Like yeah. So that maybe don't worry about that one. Yes, you do. Benny says okay. we do want that Batman. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. You just, just keep going on it. Word. Keep going. Thanks. No problem. Um, there's at the end these legs. I still think they look crunchy, but I'm I don't know. Uh, which legs? At the very end when she's running. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's check them out. It's like a soft crunch. Yeah. Do do do. do. It's because they're, they're just going so fast. They're just going so damn fast in there. Um, I would say try try to add a little bit of time to. Uh, I can show you a way to sort of try that out. So say, say you have a bunch of keys on a group. Just get, uh, if I can just go to a new scene so you can see it nicely. So if you have a cube and we're, our cube is doing a bunch of animation, animation.
and say that you because you have a bunch of limbs and stuff right so like it's gonna it's gonna be annoying retiming that you know um what you can do is select all your controls go into animation editor graph editor and you can select all the keys so you'd have like all your controls selected just select all the curves and you can press r and then middle click drag to the right and see how it stretches that out oh. so it, it just slows it down uh and it sounds amazing however there's one big problem now your keys are no longer on even frames like oh. look, this frame th this key is on it like frame 50.91 like what the fuck like yeah. how are we supposed to use that so what after you do that hold shift and left click drag over everything and then right click snap boom and that's going to do its best to snap those onto even frames and your scene will be retimed so right. yeah uh, just just do that again it was just uh left click drag over all your controls left click drag over all your keys in here r for scale and then middle click drag to the right and then uh and then yeah so so First do that, and then once it looks good, that's when you do the snap. So you, okay. so you snap them to the frames. But yeah, so add a little bit of time in there. And I think, I think that'll, I think that'll uh, look, look a little bit better. Less it's crunchy. Less crunchy, yeah, because it's just like, you, you just get like the, the legs like going like, blah, 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 like yeah. a little bit too fast. Um, she's got places to be, you know, she's got to go fast. She does, she 100% she does. But yeah, let me let me know how that ends up looking. Um, sure. Because I'm always down to look at it again. No problem. Mike, is there a way to make sure a material is applied only to one subtool? When I apply glossy material to the eyes, it'll apply to the entire model, which I don't want. Um, uh, 
Uh, oh, oh, okay. I see. So you're still in ZBrush though, applying the material, right? Um, you can, you can definitely apply stuff. Let me get, let me get some fake eyes in here real quick. Uh, you can apply different materials, but they, the problem is, is that they won't really carry over very well. They won't carry over very well. Um, simply because you have different shininess all over the model. Um, but you only have like one material. Basically in Maya, you'd have to apply another material to the character, uh, to the character's eyes, I should say. So let's do this and let's scale it down. Alrighty, and then let's give a white color. There we go. Um, we should be able to just click the sub tool. Uh, I always control left left click drag to make sure I don't have a mask. Then I also control shift click to make sure nothing's hidden. And then if we go to material, let's do Chrome. And then what you want to do is go to, uh, let's do a one that you can actually see. Let's go on oh, that viewer. It's a little bit shiny. Um, you're going to go up to color and make sure, make sure you're in MRGB mode right here. So it's going to take in your material. It's the M and then the RGB, the color as well. Uh, and then you can do fill object. Uh, right there. And then if you go back to head, you can do material like skin shade on there and then color fill object. Oh, whoops. Um, since I already have the, the uh, RGB, I'm just going to make it M instead of MRGB. So I'm just going to fill with material, fill object. And there you go. So skin skin shade is on one, then uh, the the uh, other materials on the on the other one. Shiny toy plastic might be good. Let's see. The object. That's a little weird looking. Maybe regular toy plastic. Yeah, toy plastic looks pretty good. For, for eye stuff. But again, that's not gonna carry over very well to Maya because um, in Maya, you'd basically make another standard surface shader um, with the, uh, and, and only just do the, the eye as shiny on there. Basically just a, a fast way of doing it. But yeah, I hope that helps. No problem. No problem. Real quick, Mike, uh, I'm cutting the UVs right now. What is it we do to project them onto the UV image? Uh, um, they're all looking like a, a giant, weird, like digital web. I'm trying to like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do create. So UV editor. Um, do we create. have to have all the UVs selected or just uh, just create? Uh, object. You can, you can select the object itself. Okay, so. 
Okay, create. And then uh, you could do camera base, and that will just shoot it from wherever your camera is in, in the viewport. And that should scan your model basically to give you like the fresh UVs that you can start cutting your seams across. Right, okay. Camera based. Okay, okay, cool. Right on, thank you. That's nice, no problem. Even though I don't need to uh, cut a whole lot on the model, is it that the more cuts I make, the easier it'll be for me to color like hard to reach places? Um, not necessarily. It, it'll alleviate the, the it, you'll get more pixel density, basically, in Substance Painter. The, okay. the, the more space on that UV uh, zero to one square you use. OK. Um, but generally, when you're doing a head, you do just to line up the back to the top of the skull, um, and then one around the ears, usually, uh, and then uh, on the neck as well. Like kind of like a, a cutthroat kind of thing, right? Yeah, like if you're decapitating him, you know? Got it, okay. I wouldn't need to unwrap the face, like the eyes, sockets, or the nose, or mouth, or anything like that? No, you usually just do an unfold on that, and it'll just get spread out. Okay, sounds good. Awesome, awesome.
David asks, is there any difference in the pipeline when you paint one of your weapons, Mike? Um, no, not really, not really. Like, um, let's see, what did we just do? What did we just do? Um, yeah, it's basically, like, so let me open up my most recent one. So this one's gonna look a bit weird because I I kind of disassembled it into its main components. Uh, it's like a it's like a gambling type sword, you know. So uh, I just modeled a little dice, you know, uh, and then bake some bake some maps as well. Uh, I modeled a poker chip. And then baked those maps onto a low poly. You can see my low poly if I turn it on in my settings right here. You can see it's just like a, a simple cylinder, right? Just 20 sided cylinder. Uh, and that's what I started with, with on the high poly as well. I didn't go into ZBrush for this at all because it's very geometric. I figured it'd be just easier to model that in Maya, uh, just with extrusions and bevels and all that stuff. Uh, and then I went into, to make the, the, that sort of card back effect, I went into Substance Designer and created a, uh, is there a recent, ah, man, let's see, oh no, uh, materials, card back, open. So let's open this up. Where do you can save that? Recent packages. Come right back. Dot SPS. That's what we're for. There we go. Um, and yeah, so. Because I was, I was like, would I really want to just paint this up in Substance Painter? Like, it's a geometric repeating design. Like, that'd be kind of annoying, in my opinion. So I was like, if I just make a material out of it, started with like a, a polygon, and then I layered that on top of itself, and then I made just this little stretch, which it gets tiled across um, along that. And then I just use a, a sort of like rotation node to sort of give it that little diamond effect in there. Uh, so I, then I saved out that material and I used it for this part of sword. And then um, back in Maya, I basically just took this piece of the mesh and duplicated it a bunch to make the uh, to make the the let's see if I can find it. No, I think it's another my I'm not gonna bother opening it. But yeah, I basically just duplicated the dice to to be the handle, and then I moved the poker chip into into the spot right there, um, and then it just it that's a, that's a sword right there for you. Um, so yeah, pretty much the same exact sort of feel i also made a sort of um it's like a origami katana and this one is very similar as well uh, i just did the low poly modeling in maya because i was like again the paper is kind of geometric and straight uh and you can see that i combined the uh I just kind of folded them into, into spot. So there's just a, a lot of polygonal modeling, just extruding, multi-cutting. Uh, my bake didn't really turn out super clean right here. I could definitely go back in and try to refine that. Uh, but in game, like that is so far away from camera. So I just didn't even, I didn't, I didn't care about it. But yeah, it's just high poly stuff baked onto, um, 
a low poly, low poly mesh right there. Same exact pipeline pretty much. Um, just just more more Maya based because I was dealing with a lot more geometric shapes. That's why I, I, I recommend uh, brushing up on your subdivision modeling skills if you're if you're going to do some modeling because it's it's always handy to have like there's a lot of like just geometric shapes that are a lot easier to make in Maya rather than trying to like sculpt them out cleanly in ZBrush. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, not not too different, not too different at all. Real quick, my I'm uh, I'm cutting the ear. Mm -hmm. uh, right now for my model what I have two scenes I'm looking at I don't know which one would be the best one because uh, cut me. cut the ear like around the outside of it and then at the like base of it behind the ear as well it's uh it's um it's hard to explain I can <laughs> I can show you if you'd you, like it's screen really share good. okay yeah let's see let me stop my share and then enable multiple people sharing there you go okay let me see here Here's screen go. one designs are super creative thanks. okay there we yeah. go so thanks, thanks so David. uh are you guys seeing that there yep, yep so yeah double click that one so yeah. i got this ring here um yeah. that only goes to like the ring right here and then i don't catch this part right here so i'm thinking okay i'll just double click this but then that gets me this wide yeah so i don't know which one to do both of them uh, do, one. do the first one that you were doing this one here yeah and then shift like, so where does it not link up on the bottom so it all links up. It just it's they're separate rings. And it's it's all the way down here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. But then um, this one over here, it kind of rounds out to be like the back ridge of the ear. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, but then it flattens out as it gets towards the cheek. I I, I think if if I'm it's it's one loop though, right? It's not going yeah. anywhere no, yeah, else. Yeah, it's 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 one it's one yeah. full loop right here. Yeah, you should be good to do that one then. Okay. Uh, it's just if, if that edge loop ended up going like somewhere else along the ear and then like across the face, that's like what we want to avoid, you know? Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, it's it's just this loop right here. I wasn't sure because this flattens out here and then it kind of comes up right there. I wasn't yeah. sure if I should cut this as its own UV or if I should just leave it be part of the face. It just part of the face, yeah, because okay. Um, also think about how like far across the cheek it's going like if, if yeah. you, you risk seeing like more of a seam there like with it being stretched out like that so got it okay okay cool all right Red. thank you awesome no problem no problem
what environments lighting is recommended to use in substance. Um, I don't mind the default because uh, I believe it's like an outdoorsy uh, one, but uh, a lot of these neutral ones can be good too. Uh, Tomoko Studio is pretty nice um, for like an interior spot because it has these like really, really bright um, sort of sort of lights on there. Um, I wish I had a better model to, to kind of show it, but, but yeah, and remember you can always shift and hold right click to, to rotate that around. So I like Tomo Tomoko Studio a lot, pretty good. Um, uh, studio, like all, all the studio ones are, are, are pretty nice too. Um, I do find that if you use something that like, that's like pretty, pretty intense, you, you can get like visuals that aren't going to show up in the final render, you know, cause you'll, you'll get like, uh, a lot of color from them instead of like where you, what you're actually um, like looking at, you know. So just just be careful for that. Um, that's why like, if, if you're going for for some default, I, I've used Tomoko Studio or one of the studio uh, like Soft One Front or, or Soft One Front Two or something a little bit too extreme, but but yeah, so lots of options in there. Does that work for you, Yi? Does that answer your, your question? Nice, nice.
like uh, like, <laughs> like it feels weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna about, I'm gonna stick around for about like another hour probably for y'all. Uh, let me know if you want me to stay later. I'm very down. Considering this is like the last, the last sort of, um, well, class time pretty much. It's the last of it. Um, I do want to talk about uh, future stuff. So for y'all. Um, since this is like the last computer animation course in school, uh, well, also just like 3D course in general, uh, I want to show you guys just like, I, I believe I've showed you this before, but, um, like this is where your boy started. Um, this is like my first project for 3D stuff. And you know, arm hyperextending, feet not even tracking the ground, lighting whack, environment whack, hand very whack. Look at this. Look, 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 at, that, look at that hand. No one, no one grabs that way. No one does that. Um, Are you trying to show your screen? Oh shit. <laughs> yes, that would be very, very fucking helpful for this. Uh, no, wait, yeah, um, like the so let's see, let's see. Yeah, this guy, I do kind of like the old little treasure guy. But yeah, feet sliding everywhere, the, the hyperextending arm, other arm not even moving. Like you can't even see the dimension of the hand. Look at that weird ass claw grab. Like so, this is where I started, you know, and then. Semester after, I decided to focus on animation only. So, when I was in this class, like this, the equivalent of this class, I knew that I wanted to do only animation at this point. I'm not going to bother sharing the sound, but so it's the first time I was I was like really trying with animation. It's it, it, it's it's looking a lot cleaner for sure. Um, but it still still has has jank to it. Still has jank to it. And then octopus character. Don't recommend animating octopus ever. Don't do it, please. Save yourself. Um, whoever animated that Hank guy in uh, Finding Dory was a god. Um, but yeah, and then I yeah I just kind of started focusing a lot more on animation there's still a lot of stuff that's not great about this you know like like hand hand shuffles into a position and then you can see oh man this this program sucks for scrubbing um but yeah hand shuffles into a position and then it's just stagnant right it's just stagnant for so long look at this oh no oh no like you with the amount of force going around there you'd see that that wrist sort of shifting and stuff you know so it could always be better. Um, crazy over, over exaggerated pose in there, but you know, we're, we're getting to getting the hang of it. But yeah, so I just wanted you guys to see, like, and then let's see the last piece. Like, so basically, I did all of this in two semesters, two semesters. So, so pretty much like a you know, two thirds of a year was was all all this stuff. Um, it's because I was just going going ham on it, and 
then that's how like, this be this piece especially was like how I got industry placement because it's like it's dealing more with camera, uh, more massive movement. That could have been a lot cleaner. Like the the arcs on this on this character could have been been a lot cleaner, you know. Uh, but like that was enough that was enough to get my foot in the door so like if you guys don't get like something lined up immediately like just take a year and focus on that craft you know like it, it's it's the the time is the most valuable aspect of it all you know um and i like so many of my friends got placement like one to three years after they they finished like after they graduated you know like that so they were on the grind for like multiple years and then then they finally got some 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 jobs lined up so i i, I think just for you guys I, I i want you to be specific in what you study um if you, if you don't get immediate placement after after college i want you to, to be very specific be like this is what i'm going to pursue this is what i need to learn um and i want you to not I don't, I don't want you guys to settle for quality, you know, like if you ever feel that moment where you're like, eh, I'm done with this, you know, like you, like that, that's, that's not going to be helpful for you. Always just keep like trying to push on it and try to get something that's, that's, that's better. Also something that's very invaluable is um, showing your work to professionals because they'll be able to point out things that you wouldn't otherwise see. Like you wouldn't be able to even know about and then it's because it's just because like they have more trained eyes you know to to see issues but like to develop that skill on your own like it would on, on uh, with yourself like you're going to need to get your work torn apart by by professional people you know so so please show your work to anyone and everyone um even your classmates they're they're a wonderful source of, of feedback as well. So, so definitely, yeah, just, if just keep pushing on it, you know, like I'm, I'm in, I'm still in a discord for like my, um, for my college friends that, and now they're all, now they're all badasses. So if I ever want like feedback on like painting or something, I'll, I'll hit them up, you know, and be like, yo, what's, what's good with this. And they'll tell me because they, they've studied it longer than I have. Um, and now we'll keep you around for that same reason and to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, I, I'm down for it, dude. I'm down for it. Um, please send me, send me your stuff, especially animation stuff. Cause it's like what I, what I'm good at. I can always give you guys feedback on that, but the same for modeling too. Cause that's, those are my I, rigging. Not so much. I can't really help you guys there. I can like, I know things, but I don't know like the industry way of doing things for that. Cause it's just, I don't know. They're, they're an elusive bunch, they're a very elusive bunch. Um, also for further education, if you really want to focus on something, you can do something like animation mentor, which is like taught by like Pixar and, and DreamWorks people. And like, that's a superb way to like really refine something. Um, one of your one of your skills because like like if you're only going to animate like why not just go to the best in the world and learn from them and learn like the, the 100 like like you'll do the notes you'll get from there are so like helpful and instructive that like you, you're gonna just your your skills will surpass like anywhere they would have gone um and i've also worked with a bunch of people that came from there so like you know that like that their their education is like amazing so um for modeling there's not i'm not aware of many places um in like like i'm not aware of like a modeling equivalent of nomen uh but you can look up like really fucking good artists and see if they have like a gum road instruction sort of course that you can buy like that's i'm cheap as hell dude i, I don't want to spend money so like that's more something that i would do um but if you do want to go if, if you have like the will and you want to go somewhere for a proper 3d education i would go to nomen it's very expensive it's just an art school that's like super fucking expensive um 
but they they you will you're basically going to get industry placement if you can make it through their curriculum and and thrive like because it's 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 ridiculous the stuff that they that they put together there like this is their like this is their website and you can just see let's go to their showcase let's do graduate reels let's see look at this shit y'all look at this shit my god look at it so nice so nice but honestly like y'all could y'all could what the hell no no mailing list fuck off y'all could just go in the uh, like get some get some zbrush you know like just re renew that license work on your stuff for that get get the student substance license work on that you got the student my license like you have the tools to to do to do this you have some of the the education like I, I went over the main points uh but like this is obviously a lot more refined you know um they spent a lot more time on the sculpt let me tell you a lot more time than than we did but uh but like you have the the the, the resources to do this you know don't think it's like just impossible because it looks crazy, you know? Um, but yeah, y'all can just, y'all can, y'all can get this going for your own. Um, but yeah, if you do want to actually get like an entire, um, an entire like education on this, then Noman would be the best like local place. Cause it's just, it's world-class. I've worked with so many people from Noman. It's insane. And um, what the, the other cool thing is that you're just working, you have like students that are interested in the same shit. So you guys can like nerd out together and like learn together and, and honestly compete with each other. Cause you'll, you'll get a lot better if you're like, oh man, I have to make something that's like even more badass than my friend. Like you guys will both just so, you'll, you'll just take off, you know, so. Please think about y'all's future and be specific in what you study and don't settle for, for low quality work, y'all. That's not going to cut it. Don't settle. I want you guys to push yourselves because I think y'all can do it. I think y'all can do it. I do wish we had more courses, though, on campus to support studying this sort of stuff. Because only having two is like whack, dude. It's fucking whack. It's ridiculous. Can I save my UVs maps as PNGs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but why, Benny? Why do you want to do that? Should I, should I not do that? <laughs> I mean, I just I just saved them right now. I can just save them as a different file type. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't need to save your UV map. Like, are you trying? Are you doing like the UV snapshot? I did, yeah, because I'm trying to figure out what the next step is. I just finished the cutting and everything. UVs are done, so I'm trying to like, do I re-export this into? I'm, I'm like, yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you you uh, click that that top group if you named everything correctly, you know. Um, for the uh, go into outliner, and then let's see. Yeah. Sorry, it's opening up. It's okay. Um, but yeah, so this is my low poly. And I navigate to Outliner on the uh, Windows Outliner works gotcha. nicely. Uh, gotcha. You can also hold Space and then Windows Outliner. That's what, mm. I, that's what I normally do. Um, but yeah, so here's my my low poly. Uh, well, actually, here's what I was baking on the one that has all the, the separate pieces. Mm -hmm. And if I click this, you can see my UVs, UV editor, everything's sitting within that zero to one space. Mm. And I'm, I like maximized it. So like I could, I like, it was all fitting in there and like pretty snug. So I'm not losing much detail because any wasted space, any empty space in there is just wasted. Um, but since you're only doing a head, 
you probably will have like a, a few gaps. The more the more uh, of a complex character you have, the more like shells you're gonna end up with. So you can get it like nice and detailed in there. Um, and so since it's done like that, you just can click that top group and then file export selection. Could I could I see if I have done this right? Cause I think I have, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Let me let me see here. Let's just screen one. Okay. Um, this is what I have in my outliner here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Well, let me, let me stop my share so I can see yours. Yeah. Okay. This is all I got here. Yep. Yep. Um, make that visible there, but um, I have both my maps or both my models, I should say. Let's see the low poly. Oh, okay. So click on the low poly in this video. Yeah, and then go to mesh display at the top. Mesh display, and then soften edge. And then click off that to make sure that it did soften all the edges. All right, there you go. Cool, cool. Should I do the same thing for the eyes? Uh, I think you'll be fine okay. without that. Um, and then expand expand those groups that you have in the these groups here. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah, that, that that's those ones. The ones that have like little child nodes. Um, you can just click the the plus. That's the left one. There you go. Okay. All right. Interesting. Oh, ref node. Oh, did you reference some stuff in? Um, did I? I think I'm. Looks might. like you might have. Um, so we'll need those. That's probably your high poly. So turn turn uh, on your high poly layer. Yeah. So that was that's your high poly stuff. Um, so do me a favor. File save as just so you don't mess anything up. But by, by doing this process, it could be a little bit destructive. Because we're going to import those references. Okay, there we go. Solid. Um, what? There. Yeah. Solid naming convention. Um, Thank you. Um, I'm going to navigate to where I'm supposed to save this to. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then uh, what you're going to go to, uh, to is file. And then reference editor. Reference editor. Yep, yep. And then expand that. And then just click on the head dot obj. Right click on it. Then I think it's file import objects from reference. Boom. And then do the same thing with the eyes. Oh, what the world? Okay. Okay. And then, so now you, nothing's referenced in your scene. Uh, so close out of that reference editor and then go to file or uh, edit, my bad. Delete all by type. Delete all by type. There we go. Uh, that's just regular delete by type. You're going to do delete all by type. Yeah. And then do history just to make sure there's no weird history nodes on anything. Uh, and then click on your P Sphere 2 in that list. And then P Sphere four, and then uh, oh sorry, uh, Control click on them. So, oh okay. Because so. you want them all selected, and then click on uh, Poly Surface one as well. Control click on Poly Surface one. Um, oh, also unhide that layer, the the low poly, because basically we're just selecting all the low poly stuff. Got it. There you go. And then we're gonna go Control G. Control G. Boom. There you go. So double click that group one and then name it to low poly. I can type right. Okay. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then go to poly surface one, double click that and name it all lowercase uh, face underscore. Uh, low, and then enter, and then nice, and then uh, double click the group. Oh wait a minute, is that that has a? Is there a go go to the mat head group group? Does it have a colon in the name? It does have a colon. Both of these names. Oh, that's annoying. All right, so go to Windows, General Editors, Namespace Editor. I uh, see. There we go. And then click on mat head and then delete. 
and then merge with uh, root. And then do the same for eyes. And then delete. Merge yeah, a little root. deep, then merge with root. Now, now see how their names don't have a namespace on them? Yeah. Uh, it, it's important because we need these to be the same uh, names. So shift click on both of those. Yep, and then uh, control G. And then double click, rename that group one to uh, high poly. Uh, and then click on, all right, so that's fate. That's the important one. So double click that and do uh, face underscore high. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> okay. right. There you go. And then the eyes aren't that important because I don't know if you're going to. Like your your eyes are already going to be spheres. Yeah, so I don't think this one's this one's as important. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just leave that as it is. Uh, the face is more important there. Okay. So now uh, click on high poly, click on the group, file, export selection. Export selection. Before before I do that, I noticed there's two spheres here. This one highlights both eyes. This is just kind of like this weird floating thing. Oh, here. weird. Yeah. All right. Good. Good catch. Delete that sphere too. Okay. So I just just select it and then uh, press the old delete key. Okay. And then yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice, nice catch. Also, okay. are your eyes like go to go to your click on the low poly group, then go to UV, and UV. Find, open open up your UV editor. Oh, it's over here. Uh, and then, oh, hang on. There we go. There we go. So see, see how your uh, eyes are like occupying a lot of space. Yeah. Um, if you go to your uh, shift, click your face now. Oh, uh, you you click the high poly face. Oh. Uh, I always at this point I always just click in the in the outliner to select things because oh, okay. they're like stacked on top of each other. So see how your mm -hmm. Your UVs are stacked right there. Yeah, I see that. Okay, um, I can just shrink the eyes, and put them somewhere over here. Also, yeah, wait, let's uh, click the face just to begin with. Um, I would say, yeah, I would say sh move that bottom shell over, like go into UV shell mode. And then move that over to the left. Boom. And then bring that down. Like just try to move it into the into that pocket right there. This right here. Yeah, you can even rotate it to the side. Something like that. Yeah. Rotate it sideways. Then move that over. Yeah, move it as, as close to that edge as you can. Oh, whoa. All right, that's yeah, yeah. Again. Okay. And then click the face and then just scale that up big. Just f fill up that area. Yeah, yeah. You could even bring it lower. Like you might be able to squeeze it in. Uh, no, it's not. That's going to look unsqueezable. Um, we want this to be really big, though. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to go, you're, you're trying to get as much space as you can on this thing. Okay, um, let me see here. And then you, you could also, you could rotate it maybe um, 90 degrees. And you can, you can hold J to snap rotate in the UV. Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird key, but it exists for no reason. <laughs> um, I could just bring this down here. Yeah, it maybe, fits. maybe scale it down a little bit. Just a little bit. And then move it, yeah, yeah. That that that's getting closer to fitting. Might be able to I scale this down. I would scale that down because it's it's facing oh. down in cam, so it's not yeah. even going to be. It's it's like a it's, low priority thing. It's not important at all. It's just yeah. the base of it. If it looks like shit, no one's going to care. Yeah. Um, um, and then, yeah, and then just select those ears and scale those up, and then put them. Yeah, down there. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. You basically just want the most detail on like the important parts. Right. Like, head and chest. Right, right, right. Should I 
should I turn off symmetry and slap these ears kind of be closer together and then blow them up? Because if I blow them up now, we'll just get wider apart. Uh, I think they're, I, I think they're fine where they are. We still need to fit the eyes in this somewhere. So okay, so um, click those, click them eyes now. Uh, in in the outliner. I, oh, I when I'm doing this, I usually yeah, cl yeah, click both of them. I click the face as well. Oh, that's right. So I get both of them selected, and then go into UV shell mode again, and then click the click the eyes in the shell. Oh, okay. Oops. Uh, undo that. You have you have like the. Uh, you have part of your high poly selected. So oh, just, I see. Uh, that, that's why whenever you're, yeah, so click those and then, yeah, do hold right click in the UV editor and then go. Just the eyes. I uh, know, no, no, both of them are good like this. So okay. go over to the UV editor, hold right click. Oh, I see. Right and right. then uh, UV shell it should be the top left in, on that little marking menu. And then, oh. <laughs> no. So yeah, do that and then hold right click. And then UV shells, the top left one. There you go. And then click that bad boy. And then scale them down. Uh, you could probably, uh, you could scale them up. I, at this point, I would turn off symmetry. And then go back to that UV. Oh man, uh, yeah, you only have the face selected again. So control click the, uh, there you go. And then you can select both of them at the same time and then scale them up. You could, you could fit one in this, where, where they are right now and then one below the head. And, oh, I see what you're talking about. And get some more, some more space in there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. There you go. And then click that like bottom one and then yeah, just move it over. Hell yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. And then you get so now now click the low poly, like the group, and then export that. So file export selection. Export selection. I, I, oh here we go. And then do FBX in, instead of Maya binary. Is it even here? FBX export? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then name, just uh, your name. And then I usually indicate that it's the low poly in this. Yeah, it's just UV. Okay. And there you go. Export selection. And then, <laughs> sorry, I, I saw a weird like. <laughs> yeah, there's a labyrinth of a. Yeah, of uh, a unable to export some materials. So that's fine. Yeah, we, we don't care about the materials. Can, oh, I don't. Okay. They can get the hell out of there. We're gonna make our own materials for them. Uh, and then click your click the high poly group and export it to that same folder. So file export selection. And then oh, sorry, it was already, it was already it, there. Yeah, so uh -huh. you can you can click the back button in the in the top right. Top right. I should be to the left. Oh, I see. Okay. And there you go. And then matte uh, high poly UV. Okay. Oh. And export that selection and. Pop open substance painter. You don't got to worry about Maya no more, unless something goes wrong when we're baking. And then, right, yeah. right. Let me just delete these PNGs because these were already. Yeah, that's that's the old school method. Mm -hmm. that I was, thought I was you remembering like okay, this is what we did before. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it's uh, outdated. Okay, and then substance painter. Yarp yarp. Did you did you get a PC? I did get a PC. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this isn't Mac. What, what is happening? No, yeah, it's not Mac. Let me stop sharing this screen here. Um, because it's not where did it open? Oh, it's open down here now. Okay. Okay, well, hang on. Oh, a PC with multiple monitors. Holy shit. Yeah. 
I had the tablet already. I just didn't have a a good uh, setup for anything. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do substance and share. Okay. There we go. Nice. Uh, and then, yeah. So file new. And then uh, where it says template, do PBR metallic roughness, that one, yeah. And then file, do select. No, I'm looking for my thing. Yep, you're looking for the low poly. Okay. Specifically the low poly here. Ass fat. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's <laughs> it's my uh, my five terabyte hard drive. So we were like, "What do we want to name it?" And we said, "You know what? It's it's a fat ass thing." Yeah. So we're naming it ass fat. <laughs> that is, I I approve. <laughs> I very much approve. Yeah. <laughs> and then just all just the high polys. The low poly. Low poly. So so to the right, the low poly UV. Oh yeah, yeah okay. That's that group that we exported. Right, right, right. Okay. So open that one, and then uh, go up to document resolution. How strong is this PC? Uh, I don't know. I have a GTX. Oh, fuck. What was it? Um, I could probably find it. It's pretty, it's a lot stronger than what I had before. It's a major upgrade. I know that for sure. Um, I think you'll be good for at least 2048. You could even, you could, you could give it a go and do 4096 if you want, but, but yeah. We can try it. We can try. If not, would it be hard just to like start over if it doesn't but, work? Yeah, you can do, you can change that. After, oh, okay. you, after you started um but yeah and let's see if anything else looks pretty good direct x perfect and yeah so click okay at the bottom and you should see your boy pop up as a dvd oh, boy Very nice. and then go to texture set settings texture set settings and it's on that right uh it's a, it's it's like another tab next to the oh, I see tab. It. yeah and scroll down in there and you're looking for mesh maps. It's lower, lower. There we go. And then bake mesh maps. Boom. Click that. And then go to, uh, you see output size at the top? Yes. Uh, change that to uh, change that to 1024 for now. Eventually, you'd bake out of 4096, but that would be, okay. that'd be like, we want to just make sure that the bake is going to look good mm -hmm. um, first. And then, so click off, like, I see on the left column, how it has all the mesh maps that you're making. Click everything off except for normal. So leave everything else unclicked. And then in uh, dilation width, I crank that down to like five. Hey, there you go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and then do high definition meshes. Click the little page. You see it has that big box. Click the page right icon to the right of it to add your high poly. And then, yep, click the high poly, boom. There you go, perfect. Max frontal rate, let's just leave it as is right there. And then just do um, anti-aliasing. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know what that is. I've heard of it, but I don't know. It's, what it's like um, if you've ever seen like a video game and it has yeah. like really jagged edges on like things, that's because mm -hmm. it's not anti-aliasing as much as it should be. So mm. do subsampling four by four for now. Okay. Yeah. So do that, and then match by mesh name, and then bake selected textures at the bottom right. Yeah. Mm. And then let's see. Gee, so, okay. One baking process failed. See log mm. for details. So uh, say okay. Oh, oh, open logs are good too. That is bring that down. What's the log say? It says high poly seam was required when baking normal map from mesh, but could not be loaded. When baking mesh from, I mean, it looks like it baked the details. So close out of this, and then do you see in the viewport where it says material in that little drag down box? Yeah. Make it just normal, uh, like in, in the mesh maps category. So scroll down even further. Uh, and then normal, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's getting the detail on there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's what was wrong. I that's interesting. That's interesting. That could be a seam. So go, go to the material. The material. Uh oh, back to the the, the default view. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Default material view. And then, do you see a seam in the viewport? 
the viewport no i mean it, that's it, that's where the seam is but oh you know what it's ever so slight ever so slight eh. yeah. yeah yeah a little bit but i honestly for this i'm not i'm not worried that that, that seems pretty good still yeah. uh, it's just it's the same color so it's fine so i think you're i think i think you're good to go when well, you go back to your bake mesh maps normals i oh, no, no, i did just just leave that like that uh tab where we were baking the mesh maps out from like that tool oh big mesh maps. yeah and then click world space normal id ambient occlusion curvature position Almost. thickness get them all in there mm. all right hell yeah and then output size crank that up to 20 uh 48 2048 Yep, yep. And then bake selected textures. I don't know if you can hear my girlfriend in the background yelling at her rats. Yelling at her rats? <laughs> yelling at our rats, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Those poor rats, dude. She has them on the bed right now. They're trying to probably get off the bed. <laughs> dude, I hear rats are smart, though. They are smart. You know, they're also super affectionate. I didn't think they would be. They're the, cud oh. the cuddliest motherfuckers ever. Really? So they, they lick your face. They groom you. They're so nice. They're so cute. You run yeah. by their cage, and they like they hop on the cage wall, too. Dude, hell yeah. I like that. They're so great. Um, and then press OK for this. Also, that, that went pretty pretty damn fast. Um, also, do it, above the like the bake mesh maps button, you see where it says UV padding 3D space neighbor? Make yes. that 2D. Uh, make that UV space neighbor. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then uh, rotate around to the front of them so we can see what uh, what our boy's looking like. His eyes look a little demonic, but you know what? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they have... Oh. Ooh, interesting. Oh, click off Lambert. Like, you see at the top right there? Yeah, click that off. They might, we might have had two different materials on this. How do I remove that? Uh, oh, just a little eye icon right there. Let's, oh. let's see what that is. Okay, so that's the skin. <laughs> and so that's the eyes. Okay, so yeah. um, click, uh, go back into Maya now. Okay, let me open Maya again. Um, actually, no, don't, don't worry about it. I'm sorry. Nope. No, it's okay. I'm just, I'll let it open up so don't destroy my program. So then, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just close it up real quick. Thank yeah, you for walking me through all this. I'm my brain is small. Is this, no, it's not. Actually, no, let's do this the right way. Yeah, let's, because basically you should have had uh, just one material on everything in there. Okay, so should I go back and open the file we were at before? Yeah, you just uh, assign, uh, like on that low poly, you'll, you'll just assign materials. Got it, like you, okay. You'll, you'll click on the eyes and then you'll do assign existing material, Lambert one. Okay, so let me see here. I'll wait for it to load up right now. Maya still takes a bit to load itself. And oh, I have the... it's it's a chunker. It's it a is. big chunker for sure. And we're here. Okay. Um, you're not seeing Maya right now, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, let me go ahead and stop sharing that. And instead, share Maya. Untitled Maya. Okay. Oh, wait, no, not Untitled Maya. Is there two Maya windows open? There are. How am I doing that? Okay. Okay. There we go. So click on uh, the eyes, and then hold. Oh, right wait, click. the uh, the, on the low, low poly? poly eyes. Yeah. There you go. And then hold right click. And then uh, you, you just in object mode. Just uh, like, go go back to object mode. Nice, nice. And then hold right click and then go down pretty far into the list to assign existing material. And then Lambert one, that's the one that we're looking for. Do that. And then uh, click that low poly and then export that out again as the same, same name and everything. Okay. Export selection, right? Yep, yep. Okay. That's the one. What was the name we had? It was, I'm gonna go back to navigate. Yeah, just just find it in there, and then, and then if you left click on it, it will just auto fill it as the uh, option. So we're doing a low poly. Yep. So click that, and then do export selection. It's gonna be like, do you want to override? And you're like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and then leave Maya open because we might have to go back and forth between them. So. Okay. Let me go ahead and 
select my other screen now. Back to Substance Painter. Okay. And then go to Edit because we changed the low poly, which is the one that you're seeing all the textures on. Mm -hmm. So we need to reload that. So Edit and then go to Project Configuration. And then uh, do Select and then Low, low poly. poly. Yep, yep. And then press OK. And there you go. Now click, uh, turn off Lambert in that top menu. Boom, there you go. So everything is one one shader in there. Now. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, and then try baking out your mesh maps again. So click bake a mesh maps. And then do uh, let's go up to forty ninety six. I'm feeling freaking ballsy here. All right. Okay. Let's see if my and, computer bursts into flames. Yeah. <laughs> and then do bake selected textures. Boom. Is it normally this fast? Um, I think you got a pretty good graphics card in there, dude, because it's going pretty fast. <laughs> That's it's good. Going to know. Pretty fast for forty ninety six texture. Like this is pretty, pretty quick. Like yeah, man. Ambient occlusion and thickness always take the longest, though. Mm. I can see that. I. I, I don't know why though. Really. Like, you know, I couldn't tell you. I'm I'm a student. I'm learning this. I don't know myself. If you don't know, I'm not gonna I, know. I feel like it's I don't know. Yeah, I would think normal would take so long, but it's, it's super fast. Mm -hmm. It's super fast. It might just be the way that substance painter codes this kind of stuff. It's just like chugging along. Well, like the other baking software takes a long time with ambient occlusion as well. It's really weird. Mm. It's just like how they how they roll. I don't know. Horrifying look. Love it. Good. <laughs> yeah, only, only a little bit disturbing. <laughs> Not going to haunt my nightmares. I really do appreciate you going through all this. I know you're a professor, but I really do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm like <laughs> supposed to do. So I'd be, you'd be, you should be concerned if I like was not down to <laughs> what the fuck my. <laughs> It's like no, I only say things once and once only. It's like my God. All right. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, that boy's beautiful. The, the eyes are looking a little, little dark still. Um, yeah. So go into bake mesh maps. Now click everything off except for ambient occlusion. And I just make it up. No, click on ambient occlusion again because we need to change an option in there. Otherwise, we're going to get, oh, yeah, click on the word ambient occlusion. And then you're looking for, uh, see self occlusion always? Yes. Do uh, only same mesh name. There you go. Okay. And try that now. And then, yeah, big select textures. And hopefully, this fixes it. We'll see. If we didn't fix it, what would happen with the eyes? It'd just be kind of wonky. Uh, we would just do that same method that I showed earlier about making putting the the eyes on a on a fill layer and then or putting the ambient occlusion on a fill layer and then multiplying that over everything and painting yeah. out the stuff that we can. Okay. looking dark looking dark still yeah so um go into uh like see where like under the bake mesh maps button mm -hmm. like how it has all your mesh maps out there uh yeah. click click off ambient occlusion just exit off of it yeah oh now they're right. white so now they're white but you're losing that detail that's like in the ambient occlusion itself mm -hmm. what would ambient occlusion make it really dark uh, because that's basically what it is. It's like a white and black uh, oh, I see. map showing like how it's basically your contact shadows. Mm. Um, so like, like, like think about how your cor the corner of your room is a little bit darker than everything else because like light can't bounce back in there, you know? Right, right, right. So it's that, let's do that same thing for our entire model. So go to your layers. My layers here. Layers tab. And then uh, add a fill layer. 
It's the, the two to the right of that, oh, right that button. Yeah, that one, little paint bucket boy. And then uh, go dra uh, scroll down in the uh, properties, like in, in the settings here. Yeah, that layer. And then turn off everything except for color. Turn off everything. I just. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, click that base color, uniform color box. Yeah, that one. And then uh, you're looking for ambient occlusion. Uh, oh, that that one. Yeah, that, that one right there. Okay, from Lambert. Yep, yep. And then click it, that one. Okay. Oh, they're black. Ah, okay, okay. And then, um, oh man, I think it might still be doing some dual material stuff, but that's fine. We can work around that. Um, and then uh, do, do, do create a new create a new fill layer. Let's do new fill layer because we just want nothing on those on those eyes. And then uh, turn off everything except for the color again. We don't need any of those other channels. Uh, and then base color, make that white. Uh, oh, yeah, you can just yeah click on that little color sampler crank that up to white and then what you're going to do is um add a black mask to this like so so right click the little material box at the top like in in your layers oh my layers okay mm -hmm. right click there and then do add black mask so nothing's being x'd out then go to your fill tool on the left hand side it's like the little, it's a little, yeah, that's one you were just over it. It's not the smudge one, but the one above it. Yeah. That's oh, one here? Uh, one down. Oh, you want fill. Okay. Yep. There you go. And then click the, the checkerboard box at the top left, like so, so it fills by UV shell. And then left click on the eye or uh, one of the eyes. Yep. Oh, here on the map or just the e either, either one's going to work. Boom. And then do the other one. Bang. And then uh, click that layer and the layer under it. Like shift click, uh, shift click the one under it. Yeah. And then control G to group them. And then so that's your ambient occlusion. Uh, change its. Uh, see how it says norm on the on the yes. blend settings. Go to the yeah. go to the folder one blend settings and change that to multiply. This one right here. Uh, no folder one. Like the folder top, one. Yeah. Multiply. Top one. Okay. Multiply. Uh, is, there we go. Yeah, there you go. And then it looks like nothing happened, but like uh, if you if you turn that off and on, and then put colors underneath it, you're gonna get um, that should that should have worked. Yeah, yeah. It, so so now let's put like a, a default skin layer underneath everything. So uh, click layer one, and then do another fill layer there. And then uh, do uh, do like a human skin, yeah. Ew. <laughs> yeah, it's like too large right now. God. It's also back skin. Might want, <laughs> was... might want to try a different one, but but it looks like it's working. So it does look like it's working. So hell yeah, you're. you're oh, good. what the fuck is that? Okay, all right. Well, it's good. you're good to you're good to start painting. Also, yeah. So if something's like stretching like this weird, you can always go into the. Uh, uh, your your properties for that that fill layer in the bottom right, um, bottom right. Oh, and, okay and then scroll up to the top and then uh, do rotation see how they're like kind of like oriented the wrong way oh so, yeah yeah do rotation on this and also go to the back of your model um, notice you'll, you notice how you have like different orientations for it wrapping there it's because we're yeah. it, it, this is uh, being projected based on our UVs, which will work for the face. But as soon as you get to a different one of those UV shells, it's going to be in the wrong orientation. The way you can do to fix that is go to projection. Let me go ahead and make sure this is like as even as I can get. Go to projection. Um, and, and then see how it says UV projection in there. Yes. Do tri planar projection. Hmm. So, and then rotate this box with like Q E or W E R that that stuff. Classic. Okay. So that's ro rotate it on a on a different axis in there. Rotate on the red. And grab that red and so see how it's how it's like kind of projecting across all of them there. Yeah, it's it's unnerving, but yes, <laughs> skin's literally crawling. God, okay, all right.
but yeah so so if you wanted those creases to be sideways you just rotate yeah grab that and then rotate it like 90 degrees there and then be sideways and then it'd be sideways yeah interesting okay just a giant thumb now and then that'll go <laughs> yeah i mean you could you could layer in different um different types of skin and you could also you could also change the scale you see in the uv transforms over there on the mm. right uv transform so yeah that down a yes. little bit yeah UV this. transform uh drag the scale up a little bit that's how it's one right now see see how much how fine detailed it gets got right. it gotcha so it's still wrinkly but if i have to zoom in to see it essentially oh interesting yeah yeah so so maybe maybe drag that down to like 20 or something like half half of what it is right now but yeah you can yeah i usually just drag and then look in the viewport to see like what i want for that yeah but yeah nice. okay yeah well cool and then this is it once i finish this just export it back into maya back into maya yep yep the, the uv map and all the other stuff okay nice yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so do all do all your stuff there you can paint in some eyebrows with like an eye like a uh, there should be a, a nice brush in there, and then you just use a, a fill layer. To... Right on. And then to save the file, is it should I save it as a dot spp? Yeah, that's, that's the only thing it helps. That's the so. substance painter file type. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Well, thank you. No problem. No problem. Uh, anyone else have any questions? Um, I put just the run part in that same oh, yeah. scene sketch link. It's I don't. It's still crunchy, but and I've done many things. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're trying some stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I am stuck. You're stuck. Let's see. Let's see. Gwen, run. I I like it more now. It's it's more clear. Um, there is a little bit of wobbliness now on the that pelvis see how you're you're running into that same issue with the uh how it's like pausing here it's going up pauses and then goes forward mm -hmm. so we still need that we still need that that constant speed on the on the forward axis of that um And I think you might go a little bit too low here because it looks like they're kind of doing lunges more than like a, a graceful, yeah, a graceful move. So go into the actually. Could you send me the file? Yeah, That'd be possible. Uh, does anyone else have any questions while we're doing this? How are you doing? I'm doing good. A little bit. A little bit hungry, you know, but I'm gonna fix that after class. So, so I'll be freaking peachy. Um, I'm experiencing something traumatic right now. It's it says it can't save. Oh God. Save as a dot ma. What does it say? What, what's the error say? It says could not save file. That's it. Could not save file. Okay, mm -hmm. that is traumatic um try it again try just I'll like do. a save as oh yeah neither one works mb or ma doesn't work uh-huh nice nice love that Ooh, uh weird um go go to edit delete all by type and this is very important. Don't do history. Do uh, not non-deformer history. Do non-deformer okay. history. Okay. And then try saving again. Like save as. Like don't do control S at this point. Yeah. It still says absolutely not. Weird. All right. So don't close Maya. Um it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say any other error at all. Oh, it just says, I'll try again. It was auto saving fine, but it doesn't want to. The last time it saved was like an hour ago. So that's neat. It's 
yeah, she just doesn't want to. Well, what, what does the error say specifically? Here, like, just, word will, for word. I will show you. Okay, yeah, yeah let, me, let me. There we go, All right. Okay, so I do that, do that, and she says that. Um, can't write to e document. It try to save it in a different location. Like, dude, just to the desktop, sure. Oh, okay, neat. Okay. What What does that mean? Well, it looked like it was saving to an e drive. I don't know if your e drive is like not plugged in or something. Like, it could be an external drive that's not plugged oh. in. Or I, I don't know. That's weird strange but yeah send me that send me that file um for sure tam should i uv the underside of my cape it's currently back face so it's everything's in shadow i don't mind how it looks actually but i don't know if that's an issue when making a model um you should have like well wait Because Tam, basically, what the the proper way that you'd do it is you'd have uh, you basically extrude it so it has like a thickness to it. Um, you only have one side though, right, pointing outward. Yep, uh, that that's fine for this. That's fine for this. Uh, I'm sure there's a way in Substance Painter to actually display with. Uh, let's see. To display both sides, I bet it's probably in our settings here. It's always called like backface culling frequently or some surface. Ah, mm -hmm. Um, one second, let me look this up for you, Tam. Um, oh, okay, so Tam, try this, try this. Go to, um, let me show my screen. Go to, click this little button right here. That's, it's your material settings. And then where it says PBR metallic rough, click this, and then you're looking for, um, uh, PBR metal rough with alpha blending. Do this one. And that should, that should show the other side according to random guy on, uh, on the internet. Did it work? Through the okay, yeah, yeah. So just remember it's this, it's this top material, 
and then PBR metallic roughness once you click on this little button in there with alpha blending. They said any of the alpha blended ones work, but it's on my ISO substance was off. Yeah. Yarp, yarp. All right, Sammy, did you email that one to me? Uh, I think I messaged you in Discord. There's a big woofer. Oh, big yeah. Big woofer in the back. My neighbor's got like three gigantic dogs. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> they just scream all day long, and my dog <laughs> screams back. It's just so fun. Oh, man. Downloads. Spider Glen Ballet, 30 fun. I don't shave. Show nerves curves. First things first. I'm going to change this translate Z. I want to have it be nice and clean. Boom. I'm gonna delete out this stuff. Yeah. And in fact, it should be nice and clean while moving along this surface as well. So I'm just going to get, going to get them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. This is actually not what I think it is. Oh shit. Okay, so it's both at the same time. All right, we have to clean up both this and probably translate X at the same time. Let's make them clean. Bop. And then bop. And then bop. And translate Y. Here we go. So we kind of need this. We need this a little bit earlier right here. Oh shit, okay. Oh, so these are all fucking, oh no. These are all IK. I would definitely have these arms in FK for this. Um, ain't no matter.
translate y is looking a little bit insane. Yeah. As it is. Your tangents are like poking out weird. So let's just hit it with the old auto. I'm just gonna go with auto tangents on this. I feel like this needs a bit further forward at this point. Look normal. I also feel like you almost don't have enough room on this roof. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was thinking about just like scooting it over and adding a couple of extra runs. Yeah, right. Because it seems too short. It's like too shallow. Yeah, too short of an area for for this action. Yeah. Um. But I wanted to decrunch the run first. Well, I, I turbo crunched it. Just so, oh, nice. So you know. Great. Um, Cause I also feel like they we almost might might want to do something like hmm, let's get a sphere in here. Red nine. Let's get red nine opened up. Should we do snap transforms. No, I'm not. So I almost want something like this, you know, that like mm -hmm. pops up. And then, I mean, I know it's just a, a ball, but this is just so we don't have to like look at 8 billion limbs while we're trying to figure out the motion of this. Like something that just pops up like that, you know? How, yeah. do you feel, how do you feel about that? I think that looks better than what I have. And so, more like how physics work, I guess. I think we're I think we're gonna need uh, yeah 
We're also going to need a bit more space on there, I think. So geo rig, and then we're going to look for that main control. Very nice. I'm just looking for translate X. This needs to be at this point, then. All right. Um, anyone have any other questions that I can answer potentially passively while I'm doing this? Because I will be leaving soon in just a little bit. Man, I wish this was in it. I K. I mean, in F K.
One, two, three, so we need to get a clean, clean hop in here. This one's going to be over here. Graceful back leg here. Yeah, yeah. Graceful. And Got so much to say. They're just very chatty, though. They are. They like to bark at my dog through the window, but he's not in here, so I don't know what they're yelling at. Oh, they're lonely. They they they're like, is he home, dude? Is he chilling? Can we hang with him? My dog likes to start fights, so I I think they just have a lot of angst. Therefore, you're telling me. Let's see. Where is this IK control? What the frick? Right here. Are you looking for the switch? No, I was looking for the little. Uh, oh, that thing little, likes little to just control. go into the center of the earth oh, all it, the time. It really does. <laughs> and I just, it's the worst.
Okay, 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 okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Let's see. I'm just trying to get this to like a decent level before I send it back to you. Like there's, there's gonna be like a lot of stuff to to mess with, but there we go. So that's the frame. Nice, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Right there. Oops. No. There we go. Rick is going on here. Oh, there we go. There we go. This is, I'm basically just doing a proof of concept to see if this is like possible. To see if it will look decent. Jesus, I'm just moving this to the other monitor. I think I think there's hope here, but you might need to retime some things, you know? You might need to retime it might need to add a little bit of time on this, like before this pops, see how it do, do, do. like it just it just kind of pops up out of nowhere. Might need a a little bit of like a, a few few frames of extra time there. And then that, that'll change your forward momentum on your pelvis, right? Because you're gonna add you would stretch it out a little a bit so i just play around with posing in there but yeah i think i think this will get you closer to there let's see do, 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 do. Uh, but yeah so let me, let me save this as let's do mic approach 
um, might not, it might not pan out, but still, you'll still have something there. Um, again, the, the run is crunchy, but there's more room for it now. And there's more of a pop-up. Uh, let's see, like approach. Why is mine like so much smaller in a file? It's weird. That's a little bit concerning. My file size is like half of what yours was. Oh. So I'm a little bit worried, but you know, what is? Uh, hopefully that works out. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> oh no. Upload failed. What? How can you fail my upload, dude? Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it is not doing anything. All right, let me email it to you, I guess. Uh, Sammy, what's your email? You can just DM it to me. Uh, hold, please. Um, Tam, let me look. So you're, oh, some of the stuff is baking out strange. Uh, make sure you're doing by mesh name. Make sure you're doing by mesh name in the, uh, oh, you forgot to smooth out the, the edges. Yeah, good catch. That's definitely important. Definitely important in there. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right, let me email it to you, Sammy, because for some reason, I have Gmail open over here. Aha. Let's look at the chat. What's that story about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tam. Um, that that yeah, good good catch on having some faces hardened. Um, yeah, you'll definitely want to soften those out. But yeah, I can see that you're getting a decent bake on the on the nose. Um, for yeah, make sure you're doing by mesh name in your in your bake settings. Let me share screen again. Screen two on your textures and bake mesh maps. And then make sure you're doing by mesh name and you have all of them being the same. Uh, I had that marked. Nice. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like if you, if you have by mesh name in there and make sure your ambient occlusion, make sure in the settings on this self occlusion, do only same mesh name and then try baking that out. Try baking out your ambient occlusion again, because it could be on the, on the AO like this but it does look like it's getting some lighting information in there. So it makes me think it's not the AO. Um, any other, any other last minute questions?
Tim, I do. If, if you, Tim, would you be able to share your screen if you run into more baking issues or no? Off again, it's going to try another bake round after I adjust some stuff. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Also, I'm pretty sure my con would just die. Oh, I'll just use the setting you just showed me. Thank you. Yeah, I, hopefully it'll it'll help. Um, but there's a good chance that it might not because I am seeing some normal weirdness in there, um, which leads me to believe that you don't have your meshes you, uh, named the 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 right way or something. Because this is this is a weird one. That's this looks like it's getting detail projected onto it from another spot. Um, but yeah, I can take a pic real quick. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be helpful with my naming conventions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be super dope. Super dope. Oh, uh, Tam, did you change? So I, I noticed that you have underscore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I noticed since it's high one on all of these, did you set the suffix in here to be high one as well for this high poly mesh suffix? Did you make sure that that was high one then? Yeah, it's high one. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then you're doing by mesh name, correct? On the match by mesh name. And then ignore backface. And um, yep, yep. Uh, try. Um, mm -hmm. then how are your high definition meshes? You only have, you only have that high poly loaded, right? Nothing else in there. Yeah. If you have only the high poly. Yeah. Um, hmm. Wait, did it take four hours to bake out that that map, Tam? Oh, your UVs. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah, Tam. If you are, if it's going slow, um, 
just only bake normal, only bake normal and uh, use anti-aliasing like subsampling two, just to see if you can, if we wanna make sure that it's gonna bake out a good map first. So turn down subsampling, turn down your output size to like 1024 or something. So yeah, basically you're gonna just try to get a good bake out first on your normal map and then then try everything else. But yeah, if the UVs are overlapping, then that's definitely gonna cause problems. That's definitely gonna cause problems. So so make sure make sure they're all spread apart. Um, in uh, in your in your UV editor. So like look at your low poly. Uh, I'm going to open up my baking scene as well. Boom, there we go. And then I'm selecting basically all that low poly in here. Go to UV set editor. And you can, by clicking that top group, I can see everything in here. You can see all of it. And just make sure nothing's overlapping with each other. Make sure nothing's going into into other spots. Um, it also can't hang off of this like zero to one grid, so everything's staying within that zero to one. It's not crossing over. So yeah, on, on your low poly, you don't need to worry about the high poly UVs. Um, but on your low poly, select that top group and. Make sure it's not selecting. Uh, no, nothing's overlapping in there. Uh, any other questions from y'all? I'm gonna stick around for five more minutes. Granted that I'm not answering a question. If if there is a question, I'm gonna stick around and answer it. But I'm also gonna hopefully help Tam out, uh, which could go past our closing time, but. But it would be worth to get some nice bakes.
Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Um, quick question. When we're painting things on Substance Painter, I remember you showed us how we can paint on the UV maps that it's spilling over mm -hmm. um, to the other maps if they're like nearby. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what? um. Let's, let's find that setting. Cancel out of this. It is. Um, it's in your little little properties on your paint. Okay. And you're looking for um, alignment. Instead of tangent wrap, you want to do UV. Okay, so let me see here. It's on alignment. Um, oh, I see my whole thing's being blocked by Python contour. I don't need that right now. Yeah, I, I closed that thing up. Okay, so alignment. Then it's on tangent wrap. You want it to be on UV instead, right? Yep, yep. Oh, and that's it, right? Yep. Great. Yep, okay. Yep. Cool. And would you suggest whenever things are being colored, just to use a fill layer and then use a mask to kind of yep. make it visible and invisible? Exactly. Yeah. And then you, Got if it. you're going to do paint, then you paint on the mask itself. Okay. As opposed to like painting on a different layer as a paint layer. Yes, exactly. Because if, okay. if you find that it's like too specular or too, too like too shiny or something, you just crank down the, the roughness on that material that's on that fill layer rather than like being like, oh, I have to paint over all this again. Right. With like another pass on something, you know? So like, it, it's just a lot better to work that way rather than just doing paint layers only. That makes sense. Cool. I'm uh, just adding a black mask and then just like making the areas white. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Cause that cool. white lets that layer through. Like it, it lets that material peek through there, whatever you have connected to that fill layer makes sense you just and you just like partner them like you just group them together like we did the first time yep exactly, exactly. cool all right thank you so much yep no problem Uh, so, Tam, did you need any other, did you have any other, other questions, any, any more help that you needed? I don't, I don't know if we fully figured it out, um, how to, how to help you out. That's all I had. I was just missing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just turn down the settings. If it took like hours for it to bake out, turn down the settings. Um, only do normal maps, and then you can like debug what's going on there. I, but I'd also open up Maya and see if your your UVs are like overlapping or anything, because that's gonna be, that's gonna mess up your base um, for sure. So so be sure to to uh, double check all that stuff. But yeah, uh, any other questions before I head out, my friends? Any other? Again, it's May May twelfth at noon is the due date for the final. It's got to be rendered out. Want some nice HD Arnold renders for all of our stuff? And uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, that was the that was the last class. We'll see you guys for the final. It's on. Oh, I guess I don't know. Final day. We'll we'll I'll be answering questions as well. Uh, the final starts at five p.m. on Tuesday. The final is not really anything. It's just me doing the same thing as today because our final due date is the day after. Be on the twelfth. So five p.m. at uh, on. Tuesday. Thank you, Mike, a lot. Means a lot. No problem. That's what I'm here for. I want y'all to get some 3D gains. I want y'all to come out of this class learning some, some stuff that you can take into the industry. Oh, hell yeah. Definitely going to come back and like, ask you things. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Sounds good.
always down. Yeah, no, thanks for thanks for being in it. E. Been making some cool stuff. Some very cool stuff. I will be updating the class for next semester to do one less animation and then hop over to modeling stuff if people want to do that. Um, based on y'all's feedback, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's it for the class. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, Mike. See you. See you, Mike. Bye. Thanks, Mike. No problem. See you. That makes me happy, Che. Yeah, that's what, that's what it's here for. Yeah, see you later, Tam. Have a good one. There we go.